Yes, good day. Um, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you're having a great day. Um, the name of today's topic is based on a Jehovah Witness article by the title, Who is Satan and Is He Real? Um, we're going to look at that article and go through the article and look at the, the this question. These two questions, is, is Satan real and who is he, based on the Bible? And, um, I pray God um, guidance and um, blessing on this program. And maybe to be able to lead our understanding and open our minds and understanding to also to get to, to know more about Satan and who he is and that see the truth on, on who he is and what he's up to and what he's all about. And what is God's purpose and plan for mankind and for Satan, the devil, to get rid of him soon. I pray for all these blessings and all these things I ask it through Jesus precious name. Amen. So okay, so who is Satan and is he real? We can be using the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, um, to go through and to find out what Satan is all about and, and his wicked angels. So who is Satan? Now some modern scholars say that Satan is not a real person. They claim that he was merely created in the imagination of men. This controversy is nothing new. The Devil's deepest well wrote 19th century poet Charles Peary Baudelaire is to pers persuade us is that he does not exist. Is Satan a real person? If so, where did he come from? Is he his unseen power behind the problems plaguing our world? Well, how can you avoid his influence? His influence. Now, what the Bible says. The Bible describes Satan as a real person who exists in the invisible spirit realm. Job 1.6. Um, we can look at that briefly. Tells us of uh, his vicious and ruthless qualities as well as his evil actions. So, I'm gonna, we're going to take a look at Job. 1 Job chapter 1 verse 6 and if you have a Bible you could follow on me Job 1 Job 1 6 states okay Job 1 6 says, Jehovah's reply to what? Now the day came when the sons of the true God entered to take their stations before Jehovah, and Satan also entered among them. So clearly shows Satan, a real individual, entered among God. And his righteous angels, he, he entered and taken station among them. He's not supposed to be there. And then Jehovah said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered Jehovah, From roving about, about on the earth and from walking about in it. So clearly, so the dialogue happening between God and Satan. So right away off the bat, we could see that Satan is a real person, a spirit person, just how God is a spirit person, and Jesus. And he exists, right? So it tells us. That so, other scriptures you can look for that for this Job one thirty to nineteen, um, Job two seven and eight, two Timothy two twenty six, two twenty two Timothy two twenty six. Now it even records conversations that Satan had with God and with Jesus. Job one seven. Job 1, 7 to 12. We're going to read that briefly. And then Job said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered, uh, From roving about in the earth and from walking about in it. And then Job said to Satan, Have you taken note of my servant Job? That there is no one like him on the earth, and he is upright man of integrity, fearing God and shunning what is bad. And Satan answered Job and said, It is for none that Job had feared God. Have you not put a up a protective hedge about him 
and his house and everything he has and you have blessed the work of his hands and his livestock is spread out in the land but for a change stretch out your hand and strike everything he has and resourcefully course it to your very face and Jehovah said to save and say to look everything that he has is in your hand only do not lay your hand under him himself so said Satan went out from the presence of Jehovah clearly a dialogue there clearly a real individual talking and speaking to them and moving around and in even moving in two forth in the earth and moving in and out the presence of God. So wh where and uh, we can see that if you look at Matthew 4 1 to 11 there's another conversation with the, the Satan the devil and um, Jesus when he was on earth. Right, Matthew, uh, Matthew 1 You look at Matthew 4, sorry, 1 to 11. Matthew chapter 4. One says, And then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he felt hungry. hungry. And the tempter, which is the devil, approached and said, to God to him to Jesus if you are son of God tell your stones tell these stones to become loaves of bread but he Jesus answered and said it is written man must not live man must live not on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of Jehovah right and then the devil took him upon unto the holy city and he stationed him on the battlement of the temple and said to him if you are son of God throw yourself down for it is written, he will give you his angel, he will give his angels a command concerning you, and they will carry you on their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And then Jesus said to him, the devil again, Satan, it is written, you must not put Jehovah your God to the test. And again the devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory. And he said, to him, all these things I'll give to you if you fall down to do an act of worship to me. And then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, It is Jehovah your God you must worship, and it is him alone you must render sacred service. Then the devil left him, and look, angels came and began to minister to him. So the devil clearly knew Jesus and clearly confronted Jesus there with these demands. Right, trying to tempt him to go against God, go against God's will and, and sin, basically. But all and in each instance, Jesus was victorious in, in casting him away and, and uh, shunning him, and uh, shunning his temptation. Something we all should strive to do when he, the devil, and his wicked angels try to tempt us. Now, now where did such an evil being come from, though? And now long before man existed, God created his firstborn son, who eventually became to known as Jesus. In Colossians 1, 15 talk of Jesus as the first creation of God. Now in time, other sons of God called angels were created. And Jesus was is also an angel, the first one. Job 38, 4 to 7, right? Talks about that. Now, all were perfect and righteous. All were one of those angels will become Satan. Satan was not his given name at the time of his creation. It is a descriptive name, which means adversary, enemy, accuser. He came to be called Satan because he chose a life course in opposition to God. Feelings of pride and rivalry towards God grew within his spirit, this spirit creature. He wanted others to worship him. When God first born son Jesus was on earth, Satan even attempted to get Jesus to do an act of worship to him, Matthew 4, 9. Satan did not stand fast to the truth, John 8, 44 states. He implied that God was a liar, when in fact, he was the liar. He told Eve, the first woman on earth, that she could be like God, whereas he wanted to be like God. And so, his deceitful ways, and through his deceitful ways, he achieved his selfish desire. To Eve, to Eve, he made himself higher than God. 
And by obeying Satan, Eve accept, accepted Satan as her God. Genesis 3, 1 to 7. <coughs> by fermenting rebellion, this once trusted angel made himself Satan, an adversary, an enemy of God and man. And designation, the designation devil, which means slanderer, or was also added to the wicked one's description. The lead of sin eventually influenced other angels to disobey God and join his rebellion, according to Genesis 6, 1 and 2, 1 Peter 3, 19. All right? These angels did not make mankind's situation better. Because of the imitating Satan's selfish ways or become filled with violence, according to Genesis 6, 11. And Matthew 12, 24. We're going to look at 1 Peter 3, 19. Right? Uh, matter of fact, let's look at Genesis 6, 1 and 2. And see a little description about these wicked angels that rebel al along with the devil. And became demons, so to speak. 6, 1 said, When, man, when men started to grow in number on the surface of the ground, and daughters were born to them, the sons of the true God, these were angels in heaven, right? They began to notice that the daughters of men were beautiful. They were in heaven looking down and saw the daughters of men that were beautiful. So as they began to take, they came down basically and materialize, look, you know, take on the form, human form, body, human bodies, right? They became taking wives of all whom they choose. So God was very upset with that. That's one of the reasons why I had to flood the earth. Get rid of that mixture of angels and um, and man. As a matter of fact, they children from this mixture of these s angels, these wicked angels, a man created the children was like giants in the earth. The other word was Nippleans. And if you look at chapter 4 in Genesis 6, it said the Nippleans were in the earth in those days. And afterwards, during that time, the sons of God, true God, continued to have relations with the daughters of men. They bore sons to them. They were the mighty ones of old times, the men of fame. Right, you're going to a very, very bad race, very, very evil. That's what God had to get rid of that mixture with the flood. Right? So we're gonna learn more about these wicked angels, what happened after the flood, how they changed back and went back into spirit form, back to the heavenly realm. But the you know, the, the descendants, which were these giants, were all drowned in the flood. And only eight Noah and his family survived. Eight members, eight family family members, including Noah. Right? So, very important. Now, we're going to look see another instance of these angels, these wicked angels, in 1 Peter 3, 1 Peter 3, 19 and 20. 1 Peter 3, 19 and 20. States. 1 Peter chapter 3, 19 states. And it is in this state... This is, you know, he went and preached to the spirits in prison. This is Jesus, right, went to these spirits, these wicked angels in this prison state that God put them in after the flood, right? A state of, the, of, of uh, in, inactivity in certain sense that they can't materialize anymore and so on. But still have certain powerful, you know, things they could do in mind and control and all these things. You see even today, right? But physically they can't appear anymore that they used to do before. So Jesus went... And preach to them, the, right? And he said, in this state, he went and preached to the spirit in spirits in prison, these wicked angels, who had, who had formerly, formerly been disobedient when God was patiently waiting in Noah's day, right? Time in Noah's day, these same angels, you know, they, they came down and had sex with these women and and, and, and created this bad race, you know, with mixture. While the ark was being constructed, in which a few people, that is, eight souls, were carried safely to the water. So there again in the New Testament, talk about this event that happened thousands of years prior, right? So they know that because it was passed down, was written down. This event of the flood and what happened there, that was written, recorded in Genesis, right? So the true event that did happen, these wicked angels, they are true, they are real, the devils are real. And according to the Bible, we can clearly see that, right? Now, in, um, as you read on, we're going to find out, Right? About this whole what's going on, right? 
Now, these angels, right, they make anything better for mankind. Situation is worse than ever. Because of the, the, the selfish ways, the earth became filled with violence, right, and so forth, even today. Now, how powerful is Satan's influence? A criminal may wipe his fingerprints from the crime scene in an attempt to leave no trace of his identity. However, when the police arrive, they realize that if a crime has been committed, they must be a criminal. Satan, the original man slayer, right, tries to leave no trace of his identity. John 8, 44, Hebrews 2, 4, 4 brings out him, Jesus, Satan as the original man slayer. He caused Adam and Eve to sin and, and so, so forth. And even Cain to kill Abel. Now when speaking with Eve, Satan hid his identity behind a servant, serpent, sorry, a snake. He's still trying to hide today. He has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so as to conceal the extent of his powerful influence according to 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. and 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4. We want to read that briefly. 2 Corinthians, Corinthians 4, 4 states, Among whom the God of this system of things, the God is actually not Almighty God. He's right. He's talking about the devil here. He's the God of this system of things today. Right? And he, the, he has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that the elimination of the glory good news about the Christ who is the image of God might not, might not, shine, might, might not shine true. Right? So this, this devil, what he did, he doing now? He blinded the minds of people who don't believe. So they can never quite freely understand anything but God or Jesus and uh, th this good news about everlasting life. They, they don't fully comprehend it. Because the spiritual eyes have been blinded by the devil, who is the God of, of the system. Right? So you got to be very careful to avoid not being blind by that wicked demon spirit. Right? Now, the effects of his rule include hypo hypocrisy and lies, war, torture, and destruction, crime, greed, and corruption. He uses all these things, right, to rule and dominate mankind. How, how can you avoid his influence, though? The Bible warns, keep your senses, be watchful. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking to devour someone. 1 Peter 5.8 A truth, this scripture, is all the scripture is sobering, it is assuring, reassuring to know that only those who do not keep their senses and those not keeping on the watch will be overreached by Satan. 2 Corinthians 2.11 It is vital that we accept the reality of Satan's existence and allow God to make us firm and make us strong. In that we can take a stand against Satan and put ourselves on God's side. And we can look at 1 Peter 5, 9 and 10. 1 Peter 5, 9 and 10 states. But take your stand against him, against this devil. Form in the faith, knowing that the same kind of suffering are being experienced by the entire association of your brothers in the world. But after you have suffered a little while, the God of undeserved kindness who call you to his everlasting glory in union with the Christ will himself finish your training and he will make you firm and he'll make you strong and he firmly ground you to him be the might forever. Amen. Now once again, as we clearly see here, the devil is a real individual. And um, we got to be very, very careful, uh, very obvious, observant, aware, and praying, and putting God first in every situation, putting on the, 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 the breastplate of, of on the armor of God to protect us from the wicked angel, wicked angels, and the devil. For he's a real individual, and according to the scripture here, he's seeking to devour someone. He's like a roaring lion, 1 Peter 5 8. Look at it for yourself. 
And it warns us to keep your, our senses and to be watchful because he's lurking in our corners, in our situation, environments, jobs, schools, government, families, you know, stores, everywhere you go, these wicked angels are lurking, seeking to devour someone, right? They're like rowing lions. You be very careful. But once you keep yourself on the watch, they can't touch you. Once you put the mighty name of God, Jehovah, right? They run from that name, call upon the name, and the wicked demons run. So thanks again for watching, and um, then I'm going to bring a next um, video based on this similar topic. And, and we're going to talk about what the, the Bible says about spiritism until next video. And uh, until then, have a good day and God bless.